This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Spitballin' Podcast. We here at the Sloopcast are thrilled to finally be talking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballin' Podcast. We know that we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world for our state, but baseball is booming and you have now found your new MLB pod. Take a listen to the Spitballin' Podcast by our very own Sloopcast Austin and his buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there will be some shenanigans, but there will also be unbiased MLB coverage from someone who has grown up around the game as well as someone who is brand new to the game. That is Spitballin with the No G podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other podcast streaming platforms. What's up, what's up, what's up? Podcast episode number two, recording these kind of late because of the holiday. So, uh, we're about to kick this episode right in the ass. What do you think, Kyle? Sure thing. Let's, let's get right into it. Absolutely. By the way, Kyle, on that last episode, we said we'd do a depth chart thing, and then we never did it. Nope, we didn't. Okay. <laughs> oh, hell. I might edit that out of the other podcast. Also, I might not. So uh, we definitely won't be doing a depth chart this time. We'll do a depth chart next week. It's fine. I'm pro- I'll am i promise everyone this right now. We're doing a depth chart and we're doing a mock recruiting class next week. All right, Kyle, let's get this episode started. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. How are you doing this evening? Tired. Very, very tired. Um, I was just telling the YouTube audience this during the the secret segment of the show. Uh, the only the YouTube audience gets. On the Monday episode, we said we were going to like do a depth chart while we talked about the offense uh, during the spring game, and then we never... Then we never did it. Um, so we won't be doing that. We won't be doing the defensive depth chart today either. Cause like we can't, we can't do that. So next week on Monday and on, and then the next one on Tuesday, we'll in one order or the other be doing a mock recruiting class. Cause we haven't done one of those since like the end of January. So we'll, we'll come back with a new one and then we'll be doing a, um, de- a new depth chart prediction. So we'll be updating our depth chart prediction and our mock recruiting class next week. That's two things we're doing uh, next week's episodes. So, uh, Kyle, we're talking about this. So this episode, let's not worry about next week's episode. Let's worry about this week's episode. Uh, we're going to talk about the spring game on the defensive side of the ball. Defensive side of the ball. Um, there's a lot to be learned and a lot not to be learned. Um, we didn't see a lot of uh, guys, right? Proctor played, but sort of, he wasn't out there for any of the tackling. Um, Ransom didn't play. Uh, a lot of the starting guys, uh, such as Steel Chambers, such as Tommy Eichenberg, um, didn't see any Cody Simon. Uh, but a lot of these guys played one or two series. Um, yeah, it, uh, Zach Harrison barely played. So a lot, a lot of the veteran players uh, mix that in with some banged up players. I don't think we saw any uh, Jean Baptiste. I don't think played at all. Uh, I don't think Tyler Friday played at all. Uh, we we didn't see a lot of potential could be would be starters uh so as far as like uh i is tyler friday healthy i'm trying to remember if he played at all or if he just played sparingly um because a lot a lot of the guys just sort of like tommy eichenberg uh steel chambers i think they played one or two series each um it's I'd have to go back and watch again or find some snap counts or something. 
there was just a lot of the older guys, not like Ronnie Hickman, I don't think played very much. A lot of these older guys just didn't play uh, or didn't play much, again, like a series or two. So that's kind of stinks. But at the same time, we can look at the guys who didn't play and say, well, th- those are probably our starters, right? These are the guys yeah. who didn't really need a spring game. Um, but, what we, but what we did get to see was sort of this new look defense. And we sort of saw it, right, Kyle? We sort of saw the new it, defense. I um, mentioned, mentioned it in the, like, like on Monday's episode here, but as Brian Day said, it is a very, very basic uh, offense and defense that we got to see here. But we, we got a taste of what we should see this this fall. And it's, and it's um, there's, there's a lot to like here. There's a lot to like. Defense looks a lot better. Obviously, there still needs to be a lot of work that still needs to be done. But from what I've seen early on, tackling tackling has been much improved, much improved compared to last year. Yeah, um, the tackling looked good when they were doing it. Again, there was like two, was it two or three series in which there wasn't tackling. But even then, the guys felt like they were in good position to make tackles. Um, and again, with a very talented wide receiver room, again, running a very basic version of their offense, we have to acknowledge this, um, but the defensive backs looked really good. The wide receivers were not running wide open. They also didn't run like they didn't run a lot of deep routes, uh, which is only fair right? Because the quarterbacks weren't really allowed to be pressured. So is it fair to send your wide receivers on deep routes? Um, so it, like, it's a spring game, right? The quarterbacks couldn't be pressured. The defenses couldn't blitz. The is, is a spring game. So it, yeah. you, you sort of take it with a grain of salt, but the point I think I'm trying to make here is that a lot of defensive backs were in position. The wide receivers were not running wide open. The guys were there, and they were challenging the ball, and yeah, I it, think that's exactly exactly like what you said. The defensive backs were there to make plays. The defensive line clogged up holes. It's it's what we wanted to see from the defense here. So let's 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 break out. Let's break it down by positions here. So the defensive line. Uh, we'll start with the defensive ends here. Uh, Mentioned it briefly last episode, but good to see Noah Potter back on the field there. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he made a couple of good plays. I think he had a couple of sacks in the game. Uh, but yeah, it's always good to see to see an injured Buckeye get back out out onto the field. Yeah. Uh, also, so, Sawyer and JTT doing Sawyer and JTT things. Uh, Sawyer putting on, I think, 30 pounds since last year. Uh, I think him and JTT along with the other great defensive ends that Ohio State has. It's a uh, lot, lot to like, a lot to like early on. Absolutely. Um, I think a lot of the things, and I think, Kyle, one of the questions we had last episode that could also apply here, I don't know if you were going to ask it again or not, but someone asked, like, what are the biggest overreactions? And I think, again, it's like, I think there are too many people trying to give up on Zach Harrison. And I I think that that's an overreaction. Um, And I know we're all very excited for Sawyer and JTT to get on the field. I get that. But uh, to echo something that um, Coach Knowles said during the postgame press conference, when I think he was specific, you know, I don't know if he was specifically asked, you know, is Zach Harrison going to lose a starting spot? I don't think that was the exact question, but that was, if you read between the lines, that could have been almost what was asked and what you essentially heard Knowles say, or I think basically almost exactly what Knowles said. I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but basically he says, I'm not that concerned about who starts. He says, there's going to be a deep rotation. Uh, I I think he alluded to, you know, having like a, a two full lines essentially of defensive linemen, uh, you know, I, he just doesn't, he dismissed the idea. And this is kind of a, this is a thing I've been trying to say on this show for a while. 
when it comes to the defensive tackles, the defensive ends, in other positions where you see a lot of rotation, I think the linebackers could be one this year. Just don't get too hung up on who's the starter and who's not the starter. Because ultimately, exactly. it's like it's mostly ceremonial and it doesn't matter that much. So I'm I'm just not I'm just not that worried about it because who who plays the first snap? I don't care. We we you know we can look at the game afterwards and and like who had the most snaps. Like that that might matter, but even then that might be situational. Like. I'm just not not super worried about it, and I don't think anyone should be as far as, like, who's the starter and who's not the starter. I think Zach Harrison will probably start. He's the senior, um, but that doesn't mean that Sawyer or JTT aren't going to get snaps because they're going to get plenty, plenty of snaps, I think. Let's, let's not talk about – let's not forget about uh, John Baptiste as well. Absolutely. I think that – and those are your – if you're talking about, like, a, a two-man line, those are your four defensive ends. Done. Yep over like that's it those those are your guys yeah the defensive tackles i don't think there's really much to say about them i thought they did a pretty good job clogging the middle there not not making huge spaces again very basic kind of defense here but i didn't see anything bad or good from the defensive tackles which may be a good thing yeah Uh, um yeah, he. Uh, we mentioned Noah Potter. Um, yeah, he looked good. Um, I think Jaden McKenzie had a sack. Um, he, again, in a game like this, it's sometimes hard to say. Um, Vincent Hall, Hamilton Cage. I or excuse me, um, Vincent Hall, um, Ty Leak, and Cage. I think are probably your four defensive tackles. Uh, you'll see Ty Hamilton get in there as well. Um, you'll see probably Jaden McKenzie also get in there. I think uh, you might go six deep with your defensive tackles, but I think as far as your four defensive tackles go, again, because there'll be lots of rotation, Vincent Hall, Ty Leak, and it might be Hamilton, it might be Cage. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not completely sold on that one way or the other, but again... Don't get too caught up on who's number one, who's number two. It doesn't really matter. There, there will be a lot of rotation along the defensive line. Yep. In the linebackers, Jared, linebackers, I, I really like what I saw from the linebackers here. Um, Hicks and Powers looked really good. I was very, very impressed with what I've seen from Hicks. Uh, I know, I know he's a shiny new freshman, and everybody loves talking about the shiny new freshman, but. I really like what I see from Hicks so far. Yeah, uh, I thought Trainum had a couple. Yeah, uh, Turrentine um, brawls. I, I think, um, although he's, I, I, it all gets very confusing. He's technically a safety, um, but it's so we're not to the safeties yet. But he was definitely playing up a bit uh, at safety. Uh, he's one of the bigger safeties on the team. For sure, um, no, he's not. I, I take that back. I was looking at the wrong guy. Um, uh, you didn't. You did not see Court Williams. Court Williams was also one of the guys who didn't play. Again, as, yeah. as far it's it's hard to get a good feel for like what what could be the depth chart here at the safety because Court Williams didn't play, Ransom didn't play, Hickman barely played, um, Proctor barely played. It's it's hard to get a, it's hard to get a good feel for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, back to the linebacker. Rawls, back do you to the know linebacker. that Cavazos is gone? Do you know that? Okay. Um, I figured you probably did, but yeah, mm-hmm. I think we saw a lot of great plays out of the safeties. Um, Cam Martinez looked really good. Tanner McAllister, to no one's surprise, um, being the one guy who actually understands the defense fully had a, a pretty good game. Um, Brawls already mentioned uh, Andre Turrentine had a good game and Kai Stokes, Kyle. Um, here's a guy who you remember when I was, I, I, I talked, yeah, uh, Hancock, we'll get to the corners though. Um, 
remember when I was saying last episode where I was like, hey, don't get too worried about these guys recruiting stars at this point. Man, just look at Kai Stokes. Yeah, he was very impressive as well. Hard hitting, uh, just seemed to have his nose right where the ball needs to go there. I, Yeah, I think Stokes is going to be a very, very special uh, player during his career at Ohio State. Yeah, and, and I think it needs to be said. You know, and the same could be said about Denzel Burke, who was uh, not oh. one of the highest rated cornerbacks in Ohio State's class. I believe he was behind both mm-hmm. Ja'Kalen and Johnson and Jordan Hancock. And then he ends up being the guy last year. Yeah. And now we can take a look at this 2022 class and look at the defensive backs coming into here. Um, and, you know, who had, raise your hand, and I'm going to put my hand down in a second because I didn't, who had who had Kai Stokes as the first true freshman to lose his, his red shirt? He wasn't in the top. I, I, I have to check the, the final, I, but I don't believe you ever cracked the top 500 as far as the overall mm-hmm. um, composite score went. Don't believe you ever cro- uh, cracks the top 500, yet he's the first guy to lose his black stripe among the true freshmen. Uh, had a really good spring game. Heard nothing but great things about him uh, coming out of camp. And he's in a class with... Jair Brown, who was highly ranked, and by the way, also had a good spring game. Um, yep. You know, guys like Ryan Turner and th- these other defensive backs who were in this class, who he's not ranked nearly as high as. Yeah. Um, before we go any further, Jared, we do have to take a quick, quick ad break here. Uh, All right. Again, this. Th- this episode is brought to you by the Spitballin' Podcast. Uh, Spitballin' Podcast uh, is going to be your main podcast for MLB, um, unbiased MLB um, discussions. Uh, baseball is booming, um, so you can check out the Spitballin' Podcast. Again, Spitballin' with no Gs. Um, they are a podcast by our very own Sloopcast Austin and his buddy Reed, uh, who's been a life lifetime baseball fan there will be shenanigans just like you hear here on the sleep cast but there will also be um coverage from someone who's grown up with the game as well as someone who's new to the game again check out spitballing podcasts available at spotify apple Podcasts, and wherever you find your and whatever you use for your podcast streaming platform all right Kyle. Um, yeah, uh, go, go we're, we're still to... talking. Uh, we're still talking a bit about the defensive backs. Uh, Cameron Kittle, mm-hmm. uh, he's another one of these walk-on guys who had a really, really good game. Uh, so, Cameron and, and, Kittle. And that's going to be. Yeah, and that's one of those. Um, I think one of those questions that um, was asked in our last episode about um, which player, um, which player's spring game performance will be the most irrelevant come the start of this season. <laughs> I, th- it's, it's I think mean. it might be him. It's mean, um, but like he's a he's a he's a sophomore walk on, and yes. it's it is what it is. Like I I I'm, I don't want to be mean about it, um, but I I, and I hope he proves me wrong. I hope he gets lots of snaps, and I hope he absolutely proves me wrong mm-hmm. and and does a amazing job, um, but you know. Yeah, I, is he gonna yeah, is I, he gonna deceit? Hey, what we saw with Cameron Kittle is is a lar- in large part due to the fact that all those safeties who we just named, Josh Proctor could barely play. They barely play. You know, I already went down through all the safeties who either barely played or didn't play. So of course, like some of the walk ons got in there, right? Um, yep. So I think that's what you saw with Cameron Kittle, and I again. Go prove me wrong, please. Go prove me wrong and and be a contributor to this team. But mm-hmm. you know, let's let's not overreact. Um, yeah. The, but again, the prove me that... wrong. Prove me wrong. If you're listening to this, Cameron Kittle, prove me wrong. Yeah, the defensive backs. I I really like. Uh, we, we've seen what Burke could do last year. Um, he he 
Chen Wai, he's a he's a veteran this year, as well as Hancock. Hancock made some yeah. great plays as well Absolutely. too. I, I really like I really like those two um, as your as your defensive backs here. But one thing that concerns me, I know in the last episode you talked about the depth in the offensive linemen. What about the depth in the defensive backs? Uh, Ohio State lost four has lost four defensive backs. And Ohio State right now has, they have Brown as your upperclassman, Burke Hancock, uh, Johnson as your as your um, one year into Ohio State. And then you have your incoming freshman of Brown and Turner. It's a very, very young uh, corner group here. But yeah. it is definitely something you have to keep an eye out for. But, but what we also saw was Legend Cavazos taking a a look at the landscape and deciding he could do better elsewhere. So that says something about the, even if you lose legend Cavazos from a depth perspective, that's a quiet acknowledgement from him that he was depth, right? So even if the cornerback room isn't super deep with the loss of legend Cavazos, I, I think that does say something about the quality of player in the cornerback room, even if you don't have a great deal of quantity, but you also have to realize that they stole because you went from like playing one safety most of the time to playing three safeties. Most of the time, a lot of cornerbacks were essentially stolen from the, from the cornerback room uh, into the Fair safety enough. room. So Fair enough. You, 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 you take a look and you realize that like Cam Martinez is a guy who will be playing the cover safety position, which is kind of like playing the nickel cornerback, right? So it's mm-hmm. not it's not as bad as it looks because, again, Cam Martinez is basically a corner. You could say the same thing yeah. about Tanner McAllister, the transfer from Oklahoma State. He's a cover safety, which kind of makes him a nickel corner. Uh, so uh, let's – I get what you're saying – and on paper, it absolutely looks bad. Yeah. But, you know, they also have Jansen Dunn and Jalen uh, Jalen Johnson, uh, Andrew Turrentine. Uh, Kai Stokes could will probably, I imagine, be like, he's kind of a corner safety. He's kind of a, a tweener as a defensive back in the recruiting class. So here's a guy who's, again, probably your cover safety. And therefore, again, kind of a corner. So there's a lot of cornerback style players currently listed as safeties on this roster. So Kyle, I get your concern. I hear it. Um, But there's a lot of guys at the safety position who could jump into corner if need be. And again, we're looking at a defense now that has a dedicated cover safety, which is essentially your nickel corner. Yep. Um, Another concern for a lot of Buckeye fans from last year, but I think he's going to really shine with um, Jim Knowles' defense here, and that's Tommy Tommy Eichenberg. I yeah, thought yeah. he looked. I thought he looked very comfortable with his defense here. Looked looked pretty good again. Got a it. It is a basic defense, basic yeah, offense. Yeah. You got to cut, take that with a grain of salt. But I thought he looked pretty good. He absolutely in pass good. coverage. Yep, Taraja, um, Taraja, excuse me, um, had some good run stuffs as well too. Yeah, the linebackers seem to really get their nose right in there where they where they need to be to stop some runs. So I'm I'm really pretty optimistic about this linebacker group here. Yeah, absolutely, Gangland. Uh, as Kyle just said, had some good run stuffs. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the linebackers. I I think, um. A lot of people need to hit reset on their opinion of Tommy Eichenberg. Again, we're talking about like a junior, like Zach Harrison, like uh, Julian Fleming, that a lot of people want to sort of force out and give up on. And I'm just asking you with Zach Harrison and with Tommy Eichenberg, uh, I think a lot for the most part, people like Cody Simon, um, but maybe even somewhat with Cody Simon. Just, just hit a reset button and, and let's see what they do in this defense. Yep. Just hit a reset button. Um, I remember, Kyle, I was one of the biggest Paris Campbell haters 
on the planet uh, up until his last year. And what we saw in this last year was uh, the uh, essentially the rise of wide receivers at Ohio State, which corresponded very, very nicely um, with the Brian Hartline era of wide receivers at Ohio State. And we saw what we saw out of Paris Campbell under Brian Hartline was this huge leap from his junior year to his senior year. And again, there was also a quarterback. I believe there was a quarter. Wasn't that the year Haskins? I believe. Yeah. So, you know, it was also a bit of an offensive scheme change as we saw the clock turn over into more the Ryan day offense under Dwayne Haskins. There are a lot of beautiful ceremonies for Dwayne Haskins this week. That needs to be said. Um, And what we saw was a brand new Paris Campbell under a brand new wide receiver coach under a much more pass friendly, especially deep ball friendly offense. And we saw a brand new Paris Campbell in a new situation. And I'm just asking Mm -hmm. you, to take just hit a bit of a reset for these linebackers, a new defense, yeah. a new linebacker coach. Hit a bit of a reset and let's see what happens. Because, you know, yeah, you know, as, as Gang Lynn says, of, they are talented. They are very, very talented. Yeah. Another just, name, kind of what you were talking about, that kind of come to my mind about hitting that reset button on what you thought about. Terry McLaurin kind of reminds me of that too. Had a lot of issues trying to find his place and getting into the doghouse <laughs> yeah. um, a couple of times too, but really stepped up his, his last year at Ohio State too. Now the dog doghouse with fans, I, I think Urban always loved him. But um, yeah. By the way, was I thinking of Terry McLaurin? I said Paris Campbell. I think I meant Terry McLaurin. Now that you say that. Anyway, we move forward. Um, yep. Either way, o- overall, I think, yeah, overall, actually, yeah. Gangland says both stepped up. Yeah, I think it's probably, yeah. I think it's probably just both. Um, so overall, Jared, this defense yeah. looks better. Still, a lot of work that needs to be done, but what, like what we like what we see so far. I just the thing from, I, from, the, and from again this, from this watered down defensive scheme that we saw and a watered down offensive scheme. Mm-hmm. But what we saw was a defense that looked like it knew what it was doing and that, that they weren't lost. We saw we saw guys dropping back into a zone and not covering the field, but rather covering players. We looked like guys who actually looked like they knew what they were doing. Like there was a defensive scheme in place and they were running it. And as far as, you know, 15 practices in on a brand new scheme, I think that's we just these are very very talented players. The issue with the defense has never been talent. All we have to do is put them in the right places. And what I saw out of this defense was guys in the right places. Yep. And maybe that's enough. <laughs> Even if the defense isn't amazing this year, under the first year under a new scheme, it's still going to be much much better. Mhm. It is yep. still going to be much, much better. Even if it's not everything it can be in year one, it it should be enough. It should be enough that as long as Ohio State's offensive line does what I expect it will do, that this team can make a national championship run. Yep. That right, That's it. it is, is If the offensive line can do what I think it can do, and if this defense can be... You know, where where they were outside the top 100 last year. If this can be a top 40 defense, which I don't think is a huge ask given the talent. Given the talent on this defense, I don't think requesting a top 40 defense is a ridiculous ask. It's a huge improvement. Top five defense this year. That that might be asking a lot. Yeah. I'm I think they can go above top 40. But I'm just saying if they can deliver top 40. If they can deliver a top 40 defense. And if the offensive line can be what I think it's capable of being, 
this is a national title contender because everything else is in place. All right, Jared, I've uh, got some questions here regarding the defense. Anything else before we move on to the questions? No, let's do that. All right, here. Uh, let's see. Florida Buck, he asked, which young defensive player impressed you this weekend? Um, the easy answer is Kai Stokes, and I think that's because it's the right answer. Um, yeah. Again, a lot of that has to do with the same thing that, like I said, with, with Cameron Kittle, right? Like the safeties were absolutely demolished as far as availability went, which allowed, uh, which absolutely allowed guys like Kai Stokes not to just play in the spring game, but also get tons of rep. You know, one of the, you know, we say, well, I didn't expect Kai Stokes to be the first guy with the black stripe off from the freshman class. Well, I mean, a lot of that has to do with the fact that an opportunity was presented to him. Yep. It's not an opportunity that other guys probably had presented to them. But he took advantage of that opportunity, but he did have an opportunity, you know, presented to him with Court Williams and Ransom uh, and Proctor all having injury issues. Yeah. Uh, by the way, just yep, yep. while we're on injury issues uh, at the time of recording this, we do not have a Mitchell Melton update. This was a guy who seemed to be factoring a lot into that Leo Jack, whatever the linebacker defensive end hybrid role. Um he went down non-contact, so my hopes are pretty low. Um, but with the time of recording, we don't have an update on that. Um, I fear the worst, but that's that's just, anytime I see a guy go down non-contact, because like he was locked up with the offensive lineman, but that was about it. Like he just yeah. yeah I, I'm my 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 expectations on what we hear re Mitchell Melton are pretty low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, um, another question from Kabuto. Which defensive lineman on this year's team would you, or if you were to build, if you were building a defense from scratch, which defensive lineman on this year's team would you start with? Uh, I mean, the, I mean, it has to be JTT or Sawyer, right? Like, I don't know how you choose between the two. And I don't know how you not say them, especially because if like if you're trying to build one from the beginning, let's at least get a guy in here who can have two years. Right. So you have to look at the sophomore class. Um, so you look at those two and then you obviously have to throw Tyleek Williams in there. Um, Michael Hall Jr. and Ty Hamilton, two more guys out of that out of that uh, 2021 class. Um, can I take the entire 2021 class? Is that cheating? That's absolutely <laughs> cheating, but I'll take those four guys. What's well, speaking of that class, uh, Stewart asks, um, the starting Sawyer JTT and Ty Leak get Ryan day off of third. I, I do not acknowledge the, the, the last part of that question for the record. <laughs> um, I, I, I already said it. Um, I already echoed what Knowles had to say. I'm not worried about who's starting. It's not, it's not important to me. Uh, those guys will be a part of the rotation. That's all that matters. I yep. will tell you as long as all three of those guys stay healthy, all three of those guys will absolutely 100% get a lot of snaps this year, whether or mm -hmm. not they get the first snap of the game is not relevant to me. Okay. Uh, but guy Esquire, is everyone underselling the potential of the defense this year? Seems like they have a recipe for the 2019 style season. I don't know. I think a lot of people are starting to get excited about the defense. Again, I just saw a defense that looked like it knew what it was doing, which was nice. <laughs> I saw, I saw, I saw a defense with a, with a plan and a direction, which I really just don't feel like, they anyone else watch any of the Rose Bowl that they had on BTN right before the spring game? Oh. Yeah, I watched it. My goodness. <laughs> My goodness. Um, yeah. I What we will have, what we will have is a defense with a plan and a direction, which is saying a lot more than we could say about an Ohio State defense in recent years. Yep. 
Um, uh, g- game and it's talented, asks, and it's just it's just talented. Yeah. Uh, Gangland asks, who has the filthier spin move, Sawyer or JTT? Man, they both they both put it on display. I feel like Sawyer did it against uh, against Paris Johnson, so I got to give it to him because I think no no offense to JTT, um, I want I, I know which offensive lineman it was, and I'm not going to call him out. I, yeah, but it I, was, I do. Too. He was <laughs> he was not a starter, um, yeah. and he's not a guy who uh, Ohio State hopes to start at any point at offensive tackle this year. Uh, got to give it to Sawyer just because he did it against Paris. That's it. That's it. That's yeah. The, the the skill level was different. Mm-hmm. All right. I uh, got one more because I know the answer to this. Uh, Odin uh, wants to know which USFL team has the most Buckeyes on it because he wants to, he needs to pick a team. For All the right. USFL. And you already well, researched this? You, I did. You pre looked it up, Kyle looked it up? I did. I did. Uh, Kyle well, actually sees the questions before the show. I do not. So. Good and bad. Good and bad news. Uh, uh, bad news. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's good or bad. I'll let you guys. I'll let you guys decide here. There are only three former Ohio State players are in the USFL, and they're all in different teams. So, so we have a three-way tie. Yes. So we have um, Jonathan Newsom. Who's with Bring, Bring, Birmingham? Excuse me, with Birmingham. Uh, Johnny Dixon's with New Orleans, and Mike Weber's with New Jersey. There you go. Um, pick. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Pick. Marcus Baugh played for Michigan today. Who was oh, that? Did Grand. He? Is it Grand Rapids? Is that who it is? He dropped a pass. Oh boy. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm I'm looking at ones where who Buckeye players who were drafted. So. Okay. And then. What, where where and, in Michigan? And then is and then, then, then Shay Patterson, <laughs> Shea Patterson made himself look silly, in Saturday's game. Was he Did throwing to Marcus Baugh? No. Does he also he, play for the Michigan team? I think he does, yeah. He um Well then he would have been throwing to Marcus Ball. He he fumbled he fumbled the the snap and then started running with started running the ball and then fumbled it again. Oh boy. And then defense picked it up for uh for a defensive touchdown. Oh boy. And, and he was in and, and he was in the red zone too. It was his second fumble for a turnover that quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i suppose it was i have not watched any All of right. it yet how do you guys how, the chat how, how does the chat feel about usfl so far i've, I've not watched a single snap of it me either but, me either i just saw the not one bad. well and, and i think too I, you didn't watch it yeah, live. i saw I, I only saw the one thing from shea patterson but that was it um I think I think from what I've read so far, a lot of people are like, I don't expect I don't expect it to be NFL talent or anything like that. No. I just want football, and that's fair. Um, but if that if that were enough, the XFL wouldn't have failed twice. So I don't know what to tell you. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Anything else, Kyle? I think that's it. That's all I have for today's episode. So we get to we get to do some um, um, recruiting um, discussions for next week's episode, right? Yeah, I I plugged that at the beginning of the show. We're doing a depth chart prediction and a uh, recruiting mock draft. Not not draft. I always say draft. A mock recruiting class. Uh, for the 2023 class. Uh, so nice. that will be next Monday and Tuesday in some order. I haven't, I don't know which one will be Monday and which one will be Tuesday, but that'll be next week. All mm-hmm. right. Um, anything else, Kyle? Or Okay. Uh, visit the Patreon. Visit the Discord. Uh, 
for as little as three dollars a month you get access to the exclusive channels in the discord the discord's free but there are exclusive patreon channels within the discord you get access to that for three dollars a month as well as early access to episodes as well as our secret patreon only episode um and you get to watch us record this live uh, down in the live chat with all of these uh, shenanigans down there. And uh, by the way, I have heard this from multiple of our Patreon supporters, our Sloop Cats. Um, they tell me that the Patreon only episode is their favorite episode. That is what they have told me. Uh, Gangland has told me this. Uh, Gangland and Zach, in fact, are saying it in the chat right now. Austin has told me this. They all say it's their favorite episode. And you can help us record it live or at least uh, have access to the recording after the fact. So it's basically Adult Swim. I, it's basically mm. Adult Swim. Now, are you talking about like the pool or the channel? Uh, yeah, Buckeye Esquire, both. Both. Oh, both. Oh, they both said both. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll take it either way. I'll take it. Um, Buckeye Esquire also jumping on the, their favorite episode is the Patreon only episode. So yeah, $3 a month, uh, exclusive access in the discord, early access to episodes, um, exclusive access to join the live recording down with those, uh, hooligans down there. There's jackals um, and early access episodes. I think I said that already. And then the exclusive Wednesday episode, which is just shenanigans. So ya hooligans is a new one. Come tell Jared to fuck off with us. Yeah. By the way, I'm not sure what it is, but apparently if you become a paying member of the, of, of our Patreon, then you instantly start hating me for some reason. So I'm not sure what that's about. Um, and then, yeah, then everyone likes Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, why does everyone like you more than they like me? I don't know. Okay. So with all that being maybe, said, maybe, 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 be, maybe because some people think that I'm, I don't, I'm not real. I don't exist because nobody's seen me apparently. Except you, Jared. Oh shit. Is that a thing? <laughs> god if i've been doing this if i've been doing this whole thing by myself am i tyler dirt or actually you would be tyler dirt or would i be tyler durden i don't know oh i have to worry about that when i'm trying to sleep tonight um <laughs> tonight's ending band uh much like on monday we're doing the same band today they're named Gla they are glasslands they are partially from columbus partially from nashville kind of split between the two um, but yeah, uh, they are, at least like I said, partially from Columbus. So you can, uh, listen to them. If you're, if you're listening to the audio version of this, you just sort of stay right where you are. Uh, you'll be hearing the song. If you're watching this on YouTube, then I <laughs> Kyle was did RefBot tag you for that or was yeah, that for is. Zach? <laughs> no, that was for me. <laughs> I don't want to know why. Uh, oh yeah, I, I know why. I know why. Um, that's everyone meet RefBot. Uh, he's our auto moderator and we laugh at him because he just does stuff, uh, down there in the live chat. Uh, so oh, God damn it. Where was I? Uh, Glasslands, they're ending today's show. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Glasslands. Glasslands. <laughs>